I've not seen such bravery. I love milk just about as much as I love getting haircuts. I have a tall glass of milk pretty much every night. So when I found out there was a game based around milk, I... Wait a minute, that Spy Fox game was about milk too. Weird. But not as weird as Bad Milk, the game we're about to take a look at. This has to be one of the most bizarre gaming experiences I've ever had, and I'm gonna be honest, it was a little difficult to write a script for this one. Nevertheless, sit back and enjoy a truly one-of-a-kind gaming experience as we take a look at Bad Milk. Dreaming Media, the group behind Bad Milk, still has a functioning website. Dashed with the stunning color of vomit green, the website hosts a total of two games. The first game, Bounce, which looks to me like an 80s design pattern, is priced at $12.95 and boasts gravity, bumpers, wind, and holes. The second game claims to be a new take on the ever-popular Wander and Wonder game genre. The price? No longer available. Intriguing, no? The Who Are We tab describes the developer in a weird slideshow clip art format. If this was a test of my patience, I failed miserably because... <laughs> no, no, I'm not reading this. Intrigued by a few screenshots I was able to dig up, and how could you not be intrigued, really, I set off on a quest to find not only a copy of the game, but a functioning copy. It took a while, but here are the fruits of my labor. Okay, stop, stop. How can I already have something to complain about? It's just a splash intro, nothing weird here, right? Well, currently, you're looking at game footage that has been zoomed in on. The entire game plays out in a tiny off-center box at the top of the screen. It's really weird. Anyway, the intro to the game begins to unfold in beautiful, stunning, horrible, shitty-looking, awful FMV. We appear to be enjoying some first-person breakfast when we discover our huge mistake. Today's date is February 3rd, and the milk we use expired in October. Our reaction is priceless. Oh no. Oh, oh. So kids, this is what awaits you if you ever drink spoiled milk. Apparently, you exist in a black void with an archaic cell phone ringing and spinning around in front of you. We weren't expecting you to arrive so soon. I guess you drank some dangerously outdated milk. You can escape this place, but only if you're clever. If you're not... <laughs> So to escape from this weird milk dimension, we have to be clever. And if we're not, wah ha ha ha. That lovely phone message has granted us a new spinning object to interact with. This time it appears to be an underwater Walter White in a bubble. I mean, that's just my best guess. Okay, so now we have Drowning Walter White, Frozen Panting Man, and different guy in a bubble, I guess. Uh, let's check up on Walter first. Okay, some dramatic music. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh man, here it comes! Well, okay, Walter must be a little shy. Come on out, you can do it. And... Okay, fuck you, Walter. Fuck you and your round-ass glasses, your goddamn goatee, and your stupid dramatic music. Oh, oh, I see how it is. Not gonna come out now, huh? Walter's just gonna stay down there until we click on him, and when we do, he surfaces and gives us an important message. You must... Okay, so it gives us part of an important message. It comes in four parts. You just kind of have to wait for him to go into and out of the water a few times. You must turn head five times. Lower level. Oh, thank you, Walt. That, that advice changed my life. That's all he has to say, and any further clicking just has him repeating himself. Our next stop on our spoiled milk adventure is this strange man standing by a wall and panting. All right, what's this guy's story? Oh, oh, there was something there for a second. Where was it? Oh, I get it. You click and drag the dude across the screen until he gets to the switch, which makes a sound. And 
nothing. I mean, uh, of course nothing. What you obviously have to do is make sure he gets to both levers before you let go of the mouse button, because that is very important. Important to the milk, I guess. Okay, uh, now we've got a door in a hallway, I guess. Let's just go through the door then. Okay, maybe not. Uh-oh, stuck in the dark. Better start walking. Uh, was, was that our thoughts? I don't know. Let's just move towards the door. Alright, I hear a phone, so let's try and move in that direction. Okay, so if after hearing that, you're expecting a pitch black maze type scenario where the only thing that guides you around are audio clues, then congratulations, you're like a fucking psychic or something. Yeah, so I'm not gonna drag you all the way through this part here, but I basically just clicked on arrows until I got to the next phone. There were audio effects to give me a sense of direction, but ultimately I just clicked on an arrow until I bumped into something, then chose a different direction to walk in. And when I finally got to the next phone, Okay, so I'm pretty sure we just died. Is the game over? Oh, nope. We're just back here at the magical carousel of jackasses. Just like the last time, clicking on the person in the bubble gives us a weird transition into some new spinning objects. What are the screeching tires for? Who knows? I mean, my best guess is that it's a milk truck. But aside from being named Bad Milk and showing us drinking bad milk in the beginning, it doesn't appear that milk is that strong of a theme here. There's some reversed audio going on here, and when I turn it around using the power of editing, we get this message. Tell it to you. I'm trying to tell you there's something I have to tell you. The walrus's paw. The walrus's paw? The the walrus's paw? Do walruses have paws? Uh, okay. Well, now we got Smokey Joe over here, and to get him to talk to us, we have to pull a rope. To be straightforward with you, and I never go back on my word. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nevis. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Uh-huh. All right, let's, uh... Herman. Sure. Yep. Know what I'm saying? So, obviously, the quote-unquote puzzle here is that he's saying something backwards. Simply clicking on him flips him around, and we get to listen to the audio in reverse. Number is... Oh good, great, grand, thank you for this important information. Let's just open up our clue book here and see what we've got. Hmm, so far we have You must turn beds five times blower level, Nabur you seven, and we can't forget the ever helpful The Walrus is Paw. You know the drill, another bubble, another new room of spinning douchebags. What do we have here? Okay, a guy walking back and forth coughing on a cigar a few times. Wait, wait a minute, it all makes sense. Holy shit. The milk, the notes, the cigar. The whole point of this game is- Ah, uh, wait, hold on a second. I'm getting a phone call. Let me go get that. You will need to find the correct number for the top level of the lock. Move the walking man and watch for his cigar. He may be trying to tell you something. Oh gee, thanks, Prima. That's the best strategy advice you could ever give me. Pay attention to the cigar, you say? Like I wasn't already doing that? Fuck this screen, we're moving on. This, this is the cell. Well, what kind of baby back bullshit is this? Oh my god, make it stop. God, get the finger, get the finger on the record, holy shit. This is way harder than it needs to be. Just hold down the stupid... The sound of the cone 
the clue you need to find your way through to the end of the puzzle. Oh my god, are you serious? There's a word, a word you will need. Come on, just tell me the clue. The word is... This is the oh, worst yes. thing ever. This is the kind of stuff where I can't help but wonder how it got past the initial design stages of a game. Like, who is the guy who said, Hmm, for beating this puzzle, the player gets a one-word clue. They have to wait over a minute, though, while the idiot on the record ums and ahs for a while. Trust me, it's a, it's a great idea. Oh, right. The word which you will need is albatross. Okay, Albatross, great. We'll just write that down in our handy dandy notebook and move on to the next thing, which I'm sure is just as nonsensical as everything else. Now would be a good time to remind you that this entire magical adventure of stupidity started by drinking what couldn't be more than a tablespoon of bad milk in a small cup of coffee. I just wanted to keep that in your mind. Okay, so we've got an eye exam thing here and... <laughs> Oh, of course. Another one of these. Again, I'm not gonna make you sit through an entire audio maze, but let it be known that in this one you have to go all the way to the end and then backtrack to nearly the beginning. I guess it only took me around seven minutes, but it felt a hell of a lot longer. And at the end of the maze, a pitched up voice tells us that we're not well because of the milk. Hmm, you're not well, you see. You see, that milk was really very outdated. Like we didn't already know that at this point. And then she says, Have you seen the flamingo? All right, on to the next bubble. I still have no idea what our end goal is here, but I guess I don't really care. I'm just hoping we're close to being done. That's coming right at us! What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, so I'm just gonna tell you all that this is the final puzzle of the game. This mysterious floating head is a three-piece combination lock, and as he spins around, he seems to grow and lose hair for whatever reason. So the big question is, where do we get the combination? Believe it or not, we already have the combination right here. Kind of. We wrote the appropriate things down, it's just that we have to translate them from garbled English trash into understandable concepts. And away we go! You must turn heads five times. Lower level. Number is seven. Three seven five appears to be our magic number. So let's just enter that in here and uh Okay, let's try that again. Lucky for us, when you start the game over, you don't actually have to go through any of the horrors that we went through the first time. You can just go straight to the creepy ass floating head. Okay, okay. Three seven five and Wait a minute, do you know the passwords? If you don't, then go back and get them! Aha! I do know the password, you douchebag! Albatross Flamingo, thank you, diligent note-taking! Breathe, breathe, good, good, You're doing fine. Keep breathing, I see the head, I've got the head. Very good. You finally made it! You're so precious! Look at you! You're beautiful! We've been waiting for you! We're so happy you're here! Uh... I 
I'm sorry, did I just play a game where I die from a tiny bit of spoiled milk and some coffee, and then while in some strange afterlife I solve a series of puzzles to receive clues so that I can unlock a spinning head and spell out two types of birds so that I can be reincarnated as a baby? Yes, yes I did. So the big question is, where did this game come from? Why is it here? Well, I actually don't know that much about the game. I wasn't able to dig up that much information. I know that the game was made by two brothers and that it actually won the grand prize at IGF for the year it was entered, which was... a shocker. I also found a written interview with the two creators that looked legit, but I wasn't able to verify it. In the interview, the creators talk about the game as an art project that represents reincarnation, which means that the game is actually really profound. No. They also claim to have spent $12,000 making it, which apparently isn't even enough money to de-interlace their video footage, so... <laughs> whatever. So where does that leave us? What is the message we're supposed to take away from Bad Milk? How is this game going to change our lives? Well, it probably isn't going to change our lives. It kind of sucked. Hey, thanks for making it through Bad Milk with me. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like or a comment. I may sound like a total tool asking you to do that, but it actually does make a big difference. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter, those links are in the description, and you can subscribe to me here and check out some of my other videos. Thanks again for watching, and may your milk never go bad.